Hello everybody, this is uh, Strato Warriors and you are watching MTV's Foodia! I think, well, we are very satisfied with the, to the album and um, especially the making of, of the album, the recording, they were very easy and, and went very smoothly. Probably because this was the first time that we actually rehearsed, believe it or not, for the album. <laughs> Normally we don't rehearse at all. So Jens and Jörg, they came to Finland and um, we were rehearsing one and a half weeks. And probably because of that, at least to me, it's very relaxed atmosphere on the album. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree a little bit. It's not not only because of the rehearsing, also a little bit because of uh, the actually nice place where you have been as well, visiting us in Finland, if you might remember. That was actually the rehearsing place for us, and it's a very nice place with cold water, sauna, a lot of vodka, and I think that helped a lot to start with. Uh, on top of that, it's a brilliant production, like all the time, in my opinion. You know, I always like the sound very much. It's a little bit different uh, attitude to the drums in my opinion, but I like it anyway. And uh, yeah, we have also a new cover designer, what makes the record also different from the other ones. Derek Riggs, who used to work for Iron Maiden a lot. Probably this is uh, where everybody, how everybody knows his uh, uh, work from. And uh, the rest, is, I think, is up to Yari to tell. No, hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Basically, I that's it, it. that's it, that's it. <laughs> started in Finland right after the release and uh, we played like how long, how long? Six shows I think there and in July uh, or whatever. Yeah, but uh, immediately after that then we basically went over to uh, meet Sonata Arctica and uh, Rhapsody in Sweden and then we toured basically whole West Europe with uh, almost six or eight weeks. From there we continued to. Well, we did some summer festivals and then, thank you. And then we, uh, we went to Japan, and that was great. And uh, then we went to Wacken, which wasn't that good for me. <laughs> and uh, we were supposed to be here a bit earlier in, in Brazil and, and other uh, South American countries. But uh, anyway, now we are here. And uh, so far, I think all the shows were great, especially with these two bands that uh, Jörg mentioned. And um, it's been a big success, the album and the tour for us. There's been plenty. Uh, a lot of more people on this tour than on the previous ones. And uh, also Jens liked touring much. Yeah, I really like it. Well, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. Like you said, this is our third time here and, and on the first tour probably it was like a little bit learning process for the band and, and for the fans as well. So now we are communicating a lot better and then there's more people coming to see the shows, which is very good. Obrigado. And uh, it's getting bigger and bigger. So I don't know what's happened, but uh, it's a good sign, you know. Of course, it makes you feel uh, kind of, uh, how you say that in English, uh, a little bit flattered or so. You know, I mean, you're coming from Europe, uh, the north of Europe, actually from Finland, playing your music or you're starting your music with, and then all of a sudden you have to fly, I don't know, 14 hours to come in a country and all of a sudden you have a huge following. I mean, this is definitely something uh, nice to, uh, to, to know and nice to investigate, definitely. And I never thought in the first place I'm coming here that it will be so great. Yeah, this is definitely, it's extraordinary great, yeah. There is, if there is a video from Stratovarius recorded on DVD or released on DVD, it should be recorded in Sao Paulo because it seems to be that we have the biggest following on the whole planet Earth here in Sao Paulo. It seems when we look to the first show we played here, what already had like three or four thousand people, and it looks like that we have even more this time. We uh, investigated the venue today. This morning it's absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm very happy and looking forward uh, that we can play there. And uh, I think it's a very good opportunity uh, to show also a lot of other people around the world how the audience in Brazil is like. And for, us, for, for me, it's definitely, together with the audience in Argentina, the best crowd in the world. I agree. 
agree completely. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, of course it's very important for us if we are shooting, like you said, a DVD video. It's very important that the crowd is very good as well. Of course, the band is excellent. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, the, you guys, you, you rock, and that's why we are back in Brazil to play here. And very simple. Timo should tell about the homepage because he's together with the brother of Timo Tolki, the man in charge about that. Well, first of all, it's very important, at least that's what we think, that it's very important for a band to have a very often updated homepage. It's very important. You can spread the news, you can, you can, you know, spread the word, the music about the band very easily through internet. And uh, in our case, we have, actually, it's like, like Jörg said, it's uh, Timo's brother who is doing, um, let's say, from three to five hours work a day for the home page, so he, he's updating it. And uh, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. At first we, we thought it that's going to be just, you know, two or eight and little pictures. Now there's a lot of other information as well. And it, there's going to be a video section very soon. And there's a thing w which we are very proud of, uh, that we have a sort of our shop where you can buy, you know, shirts and, and like this, very nice shirt here. And other merchandise. It's very impo important for the people who can't come to see our shows and they want to have some, some, you know, shirts or other stuff. Like now in the future we can, um, you know, sell uh, our um, CDs and uh, DVD, home video there as well. So it's getting bigger and it's, it's very, very important. The information that you can find there, that's honest and that's very updated. Like I said, there's no rumors. Um, to put it shortly, I was uh, at the wrong place at the wrong time. So, <laughs> well, um, you know, very often we had uh, big pyros on a European tour, almost on every show, I guess, and on some festivals as well. And um, so when we went to play in Wacken, uh, we had an idea, I guess it was Jörg's idea, to have a lot of pyros, more pyros. And then uh, the pyro guy, the guy who is actually pressing the button, he had this idea that he's going to put... Um, some special pyro for one song, which we uh, had, we didn't have any pyros earlier, and um, so he just told me and, and everybody else, you know, ten minutes before the show at the backstage that uh, there's gonna be well one hour whatever, but he told me like shortly that there's gonna be on this song this pyro, and uh, of course there's a lot of going on at the backstage, changing clothes and stuff, and some some people are drinking even beer, and uh, so of course I didn't remember that, so I was at the wrong place, and then. I was taking the microphone up, up, putting the water bottle on the drum riser, and then the flame came, and uh, it was immediately in my, on my hand. So that was a nice experience. You should do it as well. So, but now I can laugh about it, but I, I didn't laugh on stage actually. Ha ha ha. Uh, there's one, uh, one more word to say, to let the world know. Actually, this pyro guy is coming from Finland as, as well. And that's the reason why the Finnish population is so small. <laughs> because they always blew themselves up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the f I think the funniest thing was, you know, this p pyro guy was, of course, very depressed when he realized what he had done, you know. So he was sitting in, in the dressing room, too, like, oh, Timo's in the hospital. Oh, it was, like, very sad. And the only way that Finnish people can get some comfort is to get the vodka bottle Wah! so he was like oh, like like a child you know like but what he didn't remember was that he had all, up in the truss he had all these things he had to climb up and, and pick down all these things you know like yeah like completely like they were like really scared he was gonna fall down but he wasn't drunk when the actual accident happened you know he was uh, it was because of the alcohol yeah of course because he was hanging from the truss like thinking of vodka, you know. Of course, they wonder, like, oh, if you put one and one together here, like. <laughs> but anyway, you know, accidents can happen and they do happen in this band, you know. Of course, you can make a few jokes about it, but basically, it was very seriously, and uh, now we are very happy to be here after we had to uh, cancel the first tour. No? That's, that's for sure. Uh, well, basically, I had to go to see the doctor every day to put some cream. Not this cream, some real stuff on, on the hand and um, that's why I couldn't travel and it was hurting like hell, like two weeks basically. The skin was completely off from, almost from all uh, the hand, but still it's a little bit red, but it's it's getting better actually. Well this is what we, we do in Sweden, don't we? <laughs> 
so. Well, I like to say my very serious opinion about that. In the first place, we thought it's a very good idea to do that, but then I uh, very, very soon realized that it's very often a very big rip-off from the record companies to the fans, because uh, the record companies give the band only a very, very small budget, you know, to compete with production. They normally cost more than $100,000, to uh, make a cover song and a lot of versions sound sound very very poor um, I think recently we had a few offers to do that but we refused to do it anymore and the ones we did actually that was Kill the King for a Dio's thing that was recorded actually in the episode uh, sessions so we had actually also a song uh, where we were able to make uh, produce a good sound and stuff and uh, I have nothing against these bands playing that all, don't get me wrong, but I think very, very often these versions sound very, very poor from the production. As a record company, are not giving like 100% support uh, economical-wise. That's my honest opinion, sorry about that. I agree, because, I mean, we did a couple of those things, and, uh, well, to me, they, they were nothing special, you know. So, well, I mean, hopefully in the future, I don't do them that much. But then again, it's nice to play cover songs, don't get me wrong on this one, because Yari and me, we, like Yari said, we are playing all old metal songs because it's fun. <laughs> we don't get much money out of it, but it's fun, believe me. I don't have anything to add with. So, you're gonna see this uh, nice video from Iron Maiden, which is called Aces High, and to me, that was one of those videos that uh, I was watching, you know, time after time again, and that was probably released like uh, 80 or something. It's a cool video, Bruce kicks ass, so enjoy it. My choice is actually Asche zu Asche from uh, German band Rammstein. It's everything what uh, German music makes really, really good. It's stereotype, simple, but still great made. Check it. Uh, my choice is Ossi Osborn, Ultimate Team, because Ossi is Ossi. <laughs> 